Today is uh, September 1st, 2021. Uh, haven't made any videos for a while, but uh, we're back again with two really, really special guests that are doing awesome stuff uh, in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, Mike Komaransky, who predates myself even to crypto, uh, and then Mark Lamb, but I'll live, let them give their own uh, introductions. But we'll start with Mike since he was uh, involved in crypto long before myself. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me, Roger. Good to see you again, Mark. Hello. Um, my name is Mike Komarinsky. I am currently the director of Grapefruit Trading, which is, among other things, an OTC desk in crypto. Uh, before that, I was at Cumberland. Um, and before that, I was just a big Bitcoin fan. And uh, I've been a derivatives trader, financial trader since 2001. And it's sort of morphed into uh, being a crypto trader and a crypto derivatives trader as well. And so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Mike's being a little bit overly modest there. So D, for those that don't know, DRW is a big giant trading firm. Uh, and Mike basically pulled them into crypto and got them started in crypto. And it was uh, you that, that set them down that path. Is that, uh, is that correct, Mike? That is correct. And they're still going, but uh, I have nothing to do with it anymore. Yeah. You got it started and then uh, you're planning your seats now with uh, your own company, Grapefruit Trading. So and then Yeah, and they're a competitor of mine now. It's um, I, I shared this with Mark. Uh, if you've ever seen Bridge Over the River Kwai, I, I, I don't want to give away the end, but uh, basically the guy spent the entire movie uh, building a bridge for the Japanese because he was in an, uh, he was imprisoned in a, in a uh, prisoner camp. And at the end, uh, the Japanese train goes across and uh, he looks at it and he realizes that he has to destroy the bridge. And he says, what have I done? Um, I feel the same way. Like I've helped build Cumberland up and now, now I have to compete against it. I thought you were comparing cryptocurrency with the legacy banking financial system as well. So uh, <laughs> perhaps that's, that's a bigger, that's a bigger train to take down. One, one, one train at a time. And then Mark Lamb, I believe you got involved in 2012 in Bitcoin. Is yep. that correct? Yep. And then, Yep. Give us a little bit more of your background so people know that uh, you guys aren't just some, you know, late Johnny come lately guys to crypto. that are trying to make a quick buck on some, you know, ICO or token pump. And you guys have been around for a long, long time. So, Mark, take it. Yeah. So I uh, I got into Bitcoin in 2012 when I was sort of looking for alternative currencies and and had some uh, background in, in uh, computer science and crypto crypto cryptography. And, and you were uh, years old at that point. Is that right? I was I was 19 years old. Yeah. Um, so I, I bought as much as I could. I took out loans, bought more crypto, more more Bitcoin. That was the only crypto at the time and um, basically started CoinFloor, which was the UK's first Bitcoin exchange. Uh, I, I had been trading uh, sort of OTC and providing liquidity to the to people in the UK in Bitcoin and started realizing that there was the need to sort of automate this process and create a formalized exchange created CoinFloor. Um, we were the first exchange to do, do provable solvency. So we were uh, the first exchange to be audited, uh, audited on the blockchain. And I think to this day, uh, CoinFloor is one of the only exchanges to actually do this. And um, CoinFloor became one of the main places to buy Bitcoin in the UK. And uh, a few years ago, I basically realized um, from lots of things that were going on in the space, conversations with Mike and other people, uh, that derivatives were going to take over everything uh, in in crypto trading, and that this was going to be, you know, multiple orders of magnitude bigger than than spot markets, and so created uh, CoinFlex, um, which was sort of a spin out of of part of CoinFloor, and moved to Hong Kong, and we've just been building ever since, and we're now doing lots of volume, and and uh, yeah, yeah, hundreds of millions of dollars a day in volume recently. Um, and so since I think a lot of the people that probably watch my channel are interested in libertarian stuff and uh, crypto, they, a lot of them will have no idea what a derivative is. So maybe you can uh, explain a little bit about why you're so excited about derivatives on your exchange. Yeah, so derivatives are great because they allow people to um, use leverage. And a lot of people, when they think about leverage, they think about um, sort of what people in crypto often term uh, degenerate gambling or, or effectively very kind of reckless trading. But what we've realized is really derivative, derivatives are powerful and leverage is powerful because it can also you, just make capital more efficient. So you can use it for very long term, very um, 
sustainable and, and responsible ways of trading as well, where the leverage isn't used as a way to um, be reckless or careless, but it's used as just a way to make your money more efficient and, and earn a yield or an interest rate on your capital. So we're really excited about derivatives because they provide people a more capital efficient way to trade, um, a more capital efficient to way to uh, kind of monetize their assets. And they effectively let you do more with your money. So kind of simply put, the layman's explanation is they let you do more with your money um, in, in terms of the way that they're structured because you don't have to put the full uh, dollar amount of, of your capital down. So it, it's very similar to the value of a mortgage or any type of um, leverage in, in the traditional world. And these, you know, th these are products, you know, leverage, various forms of leverage products are products that are broadly useful to pretty much the whole world. Anything to add, Mike, as a professional trader for years and years? I think that your, your original question is, what is a derivative? Why are they useful? And I would say it's like a, a very easy way to bet on the future of, of a product. Um, derivatives have existed for a, a long time. Um, I want to say like their, their biggest point of inflection in, in the entire world is um, when the agricultural industry took took advantage of them. So people knew that they were going to have corn at the end of September, but we're in the middle of May and they have to cover costs of farming. So how do you how do you match up the cost of farming with you the income you know you're going to receive in September and futures were born. Yeah. Phys and so physically settled futures and uh, which is what CoinFlex has. And if I can add a little bit to that too, I, I think the general population out there they just assume like the economy, money, it just is. But no, all these things are actual technological inventions, just like, you know, the transistor or the iPhone or, or you know, air conditioning or whatever else. Those were inventions. All these financial tools and financial products are inventions as well that help improve the standard of living of people around the world. Just like you said, if you if you know you're going to have corn at the end of the year, but you don't know what price you're going to be able to get for it, then you can have a futures uh, contract to, to figure that out today. So these are important technological inventions. And uh, Mark is a... Uh, putting some of these pieces together in new ways, I think, for the crypto world that to make them uh, even more useful to people. Is that uh, uh, agreeable yeah, I, with everybody there? I, I'm, I'm super uh, privileged to have seen the invention of, of certain uh, derivatives, things that didn't exist 20 years ago. Um, I've seen it at, at DRW. They've created uh, derivatives of their own. But within crypto, um, but What's a, what's a very important invention in the derivatives world in crypto? BitMEX came up, I think, with the very first uh, PERP, uh, Perpetual Future, which is when we talk about futures, we're talking about, OK, I'm going to deliver you corn in September. That's very easy to understand. Uh, with Bitcoin, you could talk about what is the price going to be in September? That's easy to understand. You can, you can bet on that. And whether the price goes up or down, you have to pay off your bets that way. Uh, BitMEX says, OK, well, let's have a future. But instead of, instead of ending in September, let's just let it end never. And based on the price movement of the future versus the spot, we can, uh, we can exchange money that way every eight hours or every hour, something like that. So that was the invention of the perpetual swap. Um, and that is the future that is most common in, uh, in crypto derivatives. And it's an amazing product. It's very cool. Uh, you don't have to understand it, but it, it was invented within crypto, and maybe it'll make its way into the the real world uh, soon. It should, at least. And I think that ties us into this AMM product that Mark has there that uh, is what kind of piqued my interest initially because simple, simple version of it is that it's a way to earn money on your crypto capital. Uh, the more complicated yeah. details, uh, Mark's going to explain because he built the whole system there. But uh, can you tell, us, tell uh, everybody about that that's interested in making more money with their crypto? Yeah, so... Our AMM is, uh, we, we took this concept of automated market making. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say automated market making is what AMM stands for. So basically you're, you could, anybody can now be a market maker on CoinFlex with this really useful platform that you've built. Yeah, so I think of it similarly to the S&P 500 where um, at some point in the, in the history of stocks, um, at, at, there was no S&P, there was no index product and so and any, you know, at that point, anyone who had enough money could could go and buy 500 of the top companies in America. But the the invention of indexing, the invention of the S and P 500, was a way to democratize the 
product or the concept of buying the best companies in America or in the world or in some region. And that that concept is now how um, 10 plus trillion dollars is is managed uh, today in equities. And I, I think the uh, the DeFi or the decentralized financial uh, kind of ecosystem of, that's been born in crypto has invented this concept of automated market making. And what we've done is we've taken that and, and uh, created the first automated market maker for futures. But really what this concept is, is it's saying, well, there's a strategy uh, in traditional finance and in crypto finance as well, which is market making. You're, you're being willing to buy something and, and being willing to sell something. And so you're putting up prices on electronic markets, um, you know, moving these prices around according to specific logic. And typically this is done in a hedged way. So I, if I buy something on CoinFlex, I might sell uh, a similar product. You know, if I buy a Bitcoin perpetual future, I might sell a Bitcoin perpetual future on, on Binance. And, and I'm, you know, I'm hedged between these two exchanges. And what, what DeFi has realized and what CoinFlex has realized as well is that actually um, market makers that are hedged can provide a certain level of prices and can can you know provide a certain quality of markets but actually there's there's another group which is a much larger group which is people that are willing to actually be long the underlying people that are willing to buy exposure buy bitcoin cash buy eth buy btc yeah exactly and so there's a group of people that are happy to buy something and and they might be happy to sell out of it at times and they might be happy to to take on these these exposures and these directional liens where they're, you know, they're just getting longer of, of something. They're, 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 they're increasing their exposure or they're getting exposure, what have you. And when you combine these two, this concept of market making and this concept of getting exposure, you actually create a really high yield way to get exposure or way to hold your exposure in an asset. And so instead of just buying a thousand dollars worth of BCH, um, you could buy th buy a thousand dollars worth of BCH and stick some of that in this AMM and put a range of prices that you're willing to buy more on top of that. And then all of a sudden um, you've got, you know, at the end of the year, BCH goes to $2,000. Maybe instead of doubling your money, uh, instead of having a thousand dollars worth of BCH that's now worth $2,000, you might have uh, outperformed that. So there's a lot of crypto investors that are looking to hold crypto and they want to outperform crypto. There's a lot of dollar holders that are looking to earn yield on their dollars and they're happy to be exposed to crypto. And there are a lot of people with these types of desires and they're all desiring yield. And what traditional finance shows and what, what crypto trading shows is that if you're willing to put up bids and offers, um, when you buy, you sell out of it. When, you, when the price goes lower, you buy a bit more and then you sell out all the way back up. Um, if you're willing to do that, because crypto is so volatile and so high volume and there's so much demand to take that liquidity, um, you can actually make quite a bit of money. And so this has been something that we think really this could scale to 10 percent of the global population or 20 percent of the global population actually becoming market makers, where right now, in terms of the global population, probably less than one percent of one percent are market making. And so, you know, that 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 could be a, a massive increase in scale of market making, which is something that I mean, Mike Komaransky has been doing it for a while and, and he can tell you, you know, there's a lot of people that are doing it. They're making a lot of money. It's it's a great space and it could expand, you know, 10,000 times in terms of the capital and, and human talent deployed into it. So that's what we're trying to do. And so I'm going to explain that in a little bit more simple way uh, and jump in any time if I get anything wrong. So basically what's going on with this AMM platform on CoinFlex is you can deposit your crypto. So most people watching this will be interested in Bitcoin Cash, but you can do it with Bitcoin or Ethereum or Ripple or like Dash and like a whole bunch of other things. out. There's like maybe 20 different coins or something that are supported now. Anyhow, if, uh, you can deposit whatever you want there. And then you'll say, OK, the current price of you know Bitcoin Cash is like $650. You will say, okay, I'm willing to do market making from between $750 and $550. And it'll just put buy and sell offers on the order book there. And as the market goes up and down and ebbs and flows, you wind up eking out a little bit of profit on each of those trades there. 
uh, or, or the aggregate of those trades. And so part of the profit will be in dollar terms, but the other part of it is you get a rebate on it because you're just being the, the, the maker for each trade, not the taker, which means you put the order on the order book and you wait for someone to take the other side of that offer. And on CoinFlex, there's two different ways to pay the CoinFlex fees. You can pay it in whatever the S is, or there's the underlying Flex coin. And if you pay with Flex coin, it's cheaper than if you pay with whatever the other asset is uh, in the trade there. So all these people that are trading on, on CoinFlex are buying Flex coin. And so anytime they take a trade against your liquidity that you've put on the order book, you get part of that flex paid back to you and at that point you can then either keep the flex thinking that it'll go up more or you can sell it into whatever other cryptocurrency you want so at the end of the day let's say you start your your market making uh there and bitcoin cash was 650 you put a range of 550 to 750 in two months from now the price has gone up over 750 you can then close out your whole position you'll still have your original however many bitcoin cash you put in but you'll also have earned some dollars and you'll have earned some flex coin and again, you can do whatever you want with the flex coin there. You can sell it for more Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Dash, Monero, whatever. I don't know if you have Monero, but any of the different coins that are listed on the exchange, or you can just hold flex. And we've seen flex in the last, I don't know, month, month and a half. It went from like 20 cents to almost $2 now as the volumes on the exchange really exploded because the more people that are doing the automated market making, the more demand there is for the flex coin. There's a limited supply of uh, about 100 million of them. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think you take 10% of the trade fees to buy and burn the flex and then the other 10% get rebated to the to the automated market makers or? or, or we we system. do. Um, so, so actually uh, there's a four basis point taker fee and three of those basis at the, if you're a VIP six, if you've owned a million flex coin, the, the bare minimum is four basis point taker fee. And three of those basis points actually go to the AMM users. So 75% of that fee is going to the, the AMM users or, or any maker on the exchange. But uh, AMM users are, are you know, um, capturing a large percentage of the trades. Yeah. So so um, it, so it's basically four to eight basis points and three of those go to the, the AMM users. Um, and we take 10% of our revenues and we burn them in Flexcoin. And then we also take 10% and we're about to uh, we're about to launch a DAO, which is a way to stake flex for a variable length of time, anywhere from two weeks to four years. And we'll pay that 10% as well to uh, people that are staking flex in the DAO. Um, and, and there's also a 10% of profits and 10% of profits um, to, to DAO stakers as well. So, so yeah, the flex tokenomics are quite skewed towards, you know, the more volume that, that is done, the more revenue that's, that's, that's generated, um, the more flex gets burned, but also there's a long-term staking reward for people uh, that will be staking flex on the smart Bitcoin Cash blockchain, smart BCH blockchain uh, in the Flexcoin DAO, which, which is going live in the next few weeks. And I don't think I'm asking for any private or secret information here, but uh, there's 100 million Flexcoin hard cap. Uh, you're buying and burning them uh, with 10% of your profit. Uh, I think we can work out the numbers uh, about how much is currently being bought and burnt uh, on a daily basis equivalent, or are you able to say that? Yeah, we're 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 making um, we're making roughly between. I mean, the, the volumes have been growing substantially, and and you know change a lot every day. We're week. making, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's between forty and eighty thousand dollars a day. So. Of, um, of flex 10, that are being burnt, or it's ten percent of that. Uh, number? Th that's that's the number, ten percent of that number. So we're we're making, um, yeah. I mean, on on some days it's it's over a hundred thousand dollars a day in in revenue. So, so it's uh, somewhere in the ballpark. Quite substantial of at this point. Five five to eight to ten thousand dollars a day worth of flex, and so like as that yeah. goes on, day after day, week after week, month after month, the total amount of flex available becomes less and less and less. And uh, as that happens, assuming CoinFlex is still a popular exchange where lots of people are trading on it, uh, the price of uh, Flex is going to go through the roof there because you have a, a, an asset with a limited supply and a, a, a never-ending demand up, 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 up. And so like I bought my first B&B when they were like five bucks each. Now they're four, almost 500 bucks each. Uh, and they have a somewhat similar model, I believe, to what you just described as well. Uh, so if you if you yeah. feel bad that you didn't buy B&B at $5, here you have another exchange that's doing something very similar with some pretty significant volumes, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a day uh, in trading recently. Uh, 
I bought Flex myself because I think it's good. We're talking about it because I think it's cool. Uh, I like Mark. I like the products. Uh, I'm using this myself. And uh, I thought other people would find this interesting as well. Just like uh, previously, I made another video about uh, options over at bit.com, which is a related company, but not a direct competitor yet, I don't think, Mark. But maybe there'll yeah. be some, uh, some futures options there in the future as well. Yeah, I'll just throw in that uh, the exchange is doing so many cool things. Uh, and there's lots of different ways to be involved. One is Flexcoin. That's sort of the direct way of, of betting on their success. Um, I think there's some asymmetric returns where Flexcoin could, could 10x easily, you know, if, if, if volume keeps coming in at the pace it's coming in. Uh, that's, a, that's an easy bet. So I bought Flexcoin. My company's bought Flexcoin. Um, then there's other things like uh, the AMM product, uh, which it, it carries some risk. But you you can be a market maker. We've talked about it for ten minutes already. But um, it's some it's a product that CoinFlex invented. Uh, nobody else has it. It allows you to be a market maker. My company it requires programmers and traders and twenty four seven monitoring to be a market maker. Now you can just click a couple buttons, and you're you're a market maker just like us. So uh, it's it's very cool access to the to the markets that. You, you haven't had before. So there's that. Now there's, there's Flex USD, which is uh, an interest bearing stable coin. Um, if you have dollars and for whatever reason they're in the form of Tether or USDC, get that out of there. Get some Flex USD because you can actually earn interest on it. And that interest is paid on chain. So, Every eight hours right there into your wallet. It, like if you people still pay me sometimes in the USDT or, or, or USDC, the first thing I do, and Mark will attest to this, I send it right over to CoinFlex and swap it out for Flex USD because I lately been paying out around 10%, even 15% yeah. APR interest on it. Yeah. So I can earn 0% with Tether and have a lot of counterparty risk there. I can still have some counterparty risk with Flex USD, but I'm still earning interest on it at the same time. So yeah. if I have to choose between you know counterparty risk no matter what and earning interest, I'll earn the interest on it too. We shouldn't leave this conversation without talking about the fact that you have uh, a physically delivered future uh, which is unique to CoinFlex. It's another thing that sets CoinFlex apart. I don't want to go into the details of it, but uh, all the other derivatives exchanges have uh, cash settled futures, which are okay. They're very popular, but uh, they're still prone to market manipulation. Um, and that's one of the, the major benefits of, of CoinFlex is to physically settled futures. So no one can mess with it. Um, it's a very cool product. I think the world should take notice. Yeah, I would I would say um, I, I've been pondering this part a lot, but I would say actually it would be very difficult to create an AMM uh, without the fact that the futures are physical. Because um, so if if you if you went to if if Binance implemented an automated mark making system uh, on on their exchange and they said okay anyone can just you know plop in bids and offers in the order books, put in large amounts of capital and put that to work, um, you would have a problem, and, and this would be true of any, any derivatives exchange, so I don't mean to single them out too much, but you'd have a problem with, with perps that are cash settled where you know, there, there would be a large weighting above the, the mark price, especially for some of these assets from even small amounts of capital in an AMM, uh, let's say tens of millions of dollars would cause a large weighting above or below the index at times. And we, we notice this on the CoinFlex perps. Sometimes, you know, sometimes our, our perps are, you know, 10, 20 basis points above the index for extended periods of time. And on the CoinFlex perps, that doesn't cause um, hugely expensive funding rates because, you know, in the end, the funding rates are, are, are determined by repo. Um, FlexUSD is a, is a market maker in repo. Um, and all the repo is, is really just a marketplace for, for dollars. It's a marketplace for leverage. Um, but because that marketplace for leverage exists as its own marketplace, um, and we can just kind of, you know, people can understand all of that or a little bit of that, however much they want, if they want to go, go through the documentation on the website, but they don't, they don't need to understand that in order to trade the products. Um, but because there's a separate marketplace for leverage and because FlexUSD is providing liquidity into this marketplace, um, the funding rates are actually quite uh, contained relative to what they would be on on other exchanges if those exchanges launched similar automated market making products. So, so I think on 
on many of these exchanges, you would have uh, funding rates regularly flip to uh, 50 or 100 or, or you know, higher percentages APR. And, and, and you know, the AMMs, I mean, people can see if they go to the transparency page on coinflex.com, um, they can see the returns that, that AMMs are making. It's, it, it, there's some pretty high APRs on there, but uh, it's, it's, it is difficult uh, for any, any amount of volatility to compensate for, for uh, really, really aggressively high funding rates that are out of control. So, so I think that is one thing that, um, you know, the, 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 the physical nature of our futures really, really significantly helps with is, uh, is just controlling, as, as you say, you know, the manipulation is, is a risk. And this is something that that controls that risk on the on the funding rate side of things. So, yeah. so long story short, if you have some crypto and you want to be long on crypto and you're bullish on it in the future, you can earn, you know, 20, 30, 40, even 50 percent APR on your crypto by doing the automated market making on CoinFlex there. It's really uh, really been a, a big eye opener for me. And I've been spending a lot of time uh, dealing with that uh, recently just because it's such a interesting way to earn earn yield on your crypto in a way that only exposes you to being obligated to buy even more crypto, which is something I would be okay with already anyhow. So if you're uh, considering buying more crypto, this is a, a pretty pretty interesting way to, to earn interest on your existing crypto. Uh, and one of the results of it, one of the, the side effects is that uh, Bitcoin Cash is now the, uh, or sorry, CoinFlex is the exchange in the world where Bitcoin Cash is the most liquid. So if you need to get size off, if you need a tight price, Coinflex is now officially, I think, the the most liquid. Um, so you know, an OTC desk like myself, if if we have a thousand Bitcoin cash to buy, it, we don't move the market at all. We could just go click Coinflex buy and and we're done. And some AMM is is happy because they got their order filled. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're happy because we got a tight price and we're not moving the market. Um, that's that's awesome. Like, good good for you, yeah. Coinflex. You've got. Uh, You've got one one coin where you're you're the best. Now, now I should move to the the others as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the nice thing it 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 feels pretty good because um, we know pretty much for a fact that if we just do what we've done with Bitcoin Cash to all the other coins, we will be the most liquid exchange. So obviously, we're doing hundreds of millions of dollars. A lot of that is in BCH. We hope that in the future we're doing tens of billions of dollars worth of BCH volume. But also similarly, um, we can just go down to, to whales and, and large retail users and, and, and small use retail users and, and tens of thousands, a hundred thousand people and get them to deposit their Ethereum, deposit their Bitcoin, deposit their Monero, deposit all sorts of things. Um, well, Monero is not one we've listed yet, but deposit lots of other coins and hey, you know, will quickly become the most liquid venue for all, for all of these things. And so, and and one thing that is definitely for sure, traders love liquidity. So liquidity begets liquidity. Um, we now see market makers that are not AMMs also quoting in Bitcoin Cash uh, and trying to compete with these AMMs. And they're doing so because they know that, hey, uh, if they get a position that they're stuck with that they have to get out of, it's really easy to get out, you know. Uh, there's lots of liquidity, and so market makers as well that are traditional market makers um, love being able to uh, make markets in a liquid market, and so they're coming to the, our Bitcoin Cash markets, and that just, you know, that just drives more volume as well. So, so it is this kind of virtuous circle where with Flex USD people are winning from the AMM, uh, Flex USD holders are getting getting paid interest from from AMM users, AMM users are making money from volume on the exchange and then CoinFlex wins as well, which which also means that uh, that FlexCoin ends up winning. So um, yeah, it's it's a very it's a very uh, sort of uh, virtuous ecosystem. And yeah, we just you know we welcome more people from the Bitcoin Cash space, from the crypto space generally, uh, to just come and, and try out what we're you know what we're doing here. Any, any additional things you want to add or tell us about what your plans are for the future? I don't know how much you want to say publicly at this point, Mark, but uh, he has big plans. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. So one thing I'd love to talk about is smart BCH. Um, we're really excited about it as, as a company. I'm, I'm personally very, very uh, excited about Bitcoin Cash, but also as a company now, this, this really gives us a chance to be very actively involved in, in building things for BCH. Um, and, and, Basically, 
the advantage that smart BCH has over, let's say, Ethereum and 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 all the other sort of uh, smart contracting platforms is that it's, I mean, frankly speaking, it's about 130 or somewhere between 80 and 133 uh, times more scalable um, in terms of the gas, so that the transactions capable to be done per per block. So the transactions per 10 seconds or six seconds, uh, it's about 100 times more than Ethereum straight out of the gate. And I think the typical reaction to this that people have is, well, doesn't that mean it's super centralized? Uh, and you have this concern with things like BSC and Solana and lots of blockchains where they're highly scalable, but at the end of the day, maybe it's uh, all controlled by a, a dozen people or something. And the advantage you have with smart BCH is that the ability to validate transactions on the network is not centrally controlled by a foundation. It's not centrally controlled by a large exchange or something like that. It's actually based on your proof of work on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. So because it's based on your proof of work on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain, it's it's it effectively ends up being, um, maybe not right now, but it effectively ends up being at scale just as decentralized as Bitcoin Cash, which is the most decentralized um, kind of network of miners in in the world. Um, so, so the, the end result is something that's very powerful for DeFi people to build on because you know the end users might not care about decentralization as much as they just care about convenience, uh, you know, low fees, speed. Um, but builders, developers, um, people that are building in DeFi really care about decentralization because their reputations are at stake, and so they don't want to build on a platform that. You know the rules are just going to change from under them because the creators of the platform don't like what they're doing or something, and so and we are a builder in DeFi. You know, Flex USD is is a stablecoin that exists on Ethereum and it exists on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain, and we're looking to put it on other blockchains. And so, as a builder, it's very exciting. But also, what's exciting about it for us is there is no stablecoin in Smart BCH yet, and I think there, you know, a lot of the big stablecoins. Um, are probably going to overlook this for a little bit. So I think we have a bit of an edge where for the next few months, we can probably be the only stable coin on smart BCH. And I think that hopefully, you know, USDC got their lead over Tether. They're, they're still a smaller stable coin, but they, they're now tens of billions of dollars. USDC got their lead over Tether by really going aggressively into uh, the DeFi landscape. And what we're trying to do with smart Bitcoin, smart BCH is go really aggressively into the uh, BCH ecosystem and the smart BCH ecosystem and get FlexUSD popularized. And that again is just gonna help our whole ecosystem of other products. So um, FlexUSD becoming a multi-billion dollar and eventually $10 billion plus stable coin will just make uh, interest rates much cheaper on the exchange, futures perp rates cheaper on the exchange. And it makes it that much more compelling to use the AMM because you know you're not going to be paying very much in, in interest to be long. And so it makes it much easier for people. And where are we at at the moment? We're somewhere in the ballpark of $100 million worth we of We just crossed. Yeah, we just crossed $100 million, So getting there. Yeah. Thank you. So the zero to one is much harder than one to 100. So we're, we're on the way. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The next $100 million will be a million times easier than the first $100 million, So. Yeah. So so right now Flex USD is redeemable for USDC. So when you you take your Flex USD and you say, you know what, I want I want my money back in a bank. Well, it doesn't work exactly like that. You go to CoinFlex, you convert your Flex USD to, and they give you USDC back. How you get from USDC to money to dollars in your bank is up to you. Um, but yeah. I guess if you're going to go to tens of billions of dollars, uh, you're going to start competing and maybe even eclipsing uh, USDC. So uh, you'll have to become a stable coin in the true sense of the word, where you're no longer redeeming for, for USDC, but actually redeeming for USD. And maybe you'll just acquire USDC and use them as your, your fiat rails. So. Maybe you'll I'm, acquire the US government. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Flex fairly USD is, is the method of payment. Yeah, I'm fairly confident we will, uh, we will have a fiat provider uh, for redemptions of of, uh, of FlexUSD into US dollars directly, so Great. there's there's at least three three different um, routes that are are all sort of interested in in that, and uh, yeah, I, th I think one of them is probably going to work out. So we just have to. What figure is out what does Flex stand for? 
Flex, Coin Flex. Uh, yeah. So CoinFlex is uh, people. A lot of people think it's just you know flexing your assets and and levering up, but it stands for Futures and Lending Exchange. So, uh, yeah. I learned something new Which, today. <laughs> yeah, it it ended up being um, a mutual friend of ours. Actually, was the one who who thought of the name. So, but it ended up being pretty true. Lending. Uh, we were originally thinking of that with uh, basis trading and basis trading being sort of a proxy for lending. Uh, repo and and you know the way the interest rate works work and that kind of all end up being pretty pretty core to what we do at CoinFlex. So um, yeah, that's true. I, I spent the first month um, tr thinking that Bitmex was a, a Mexican exchange. So I think Flex is a, <laughs> a slightly better name. You mean it's not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not based in Mexico. What? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I guess we'll kind of wrap this up with a call for everybody. If you haven't tried CoinFlex, go on over there and uh, give it a try. Get some Flex USD, put it in your Bitcoin.com wallet. You'll see every eight hours the interest showing up right there in your wallet. Uh, test out the automated market making they have over there. Uh, at some point, I'll try and make a little tutorial video to just show you how easy it is to set uh, set up one of those and the money that can be earned. And uh, and we'll go from there. So anything else either of you guys have to add today or is that, uh, is that good? If anybody wants to do OTC, we're, we're very good at converting uh, fiat to crypto and other crypto to crypto and strange requests of uh, grapefruit trading. Go to uh, gfruit, G-F-R-U dot I-T. That's our website. And, uh, yeah, and I've, I've uh, known Mike for a long time. He's a fantastic uh, guy. Uh, and again, earlier to the crypto space than myself. So uh, he really has seen uh, a lot and knows a lot. So uh, I recommend him uh, full, full heartedly. And you can see if I'm dead or not by going to ismikekomaranskydead.com. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you, guys. Uh, if you find this helpful, uh, share the information with a friend and give uh, coinflex.com uh, a try and grapefruit trading the next time you have an OTC request. We'll see everybody next time. See you.